Let's dive into the AI narrative around crypto and talk about a few tokens, but also some of the technologies that could be shifting the entire landscape when it comes to crypto AI. You guys don't want to miss it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. I want to go into our sponsor today. That is CoinLedger. If you guys are wanting to get your taxes done in minutes, this is one of the tools you can use. And of course, you can do this with your exchanges, your DeFi wallets, all sorts of things out there in terms of integration with their app. So make sure and use our link down below does help the channel out and uh, we appreciate it. All right, so let's get into a couple of topics here today. And ETH, of course, now starting to edge its way towards 3K. A lot of people were wondering why. Now, there's a couple of analysts out there saying, we think all this could have to do with AI. So many people are very bullish on Ethereum and where it's going. So this particular analyst is saying a 50% chance for ETH's approval on the ETF. Now remember, that's coming up in May. You also have something else coming up in May and that's the happening. There's a lot of things happening right now between crypto, what's happening with technology, and also within the economy from a macro standpoint. Some very interesting things really brewing to potentially drive ETH to maybe a much faster all-time high. Here we, go, uh, here we go a little bit further. ETH is now staking yield dynamics, uh, being very friendly to do. A lot of people are now starting to stake ETH more and more. That is a big factor. He also emphasized the transfer transformative potential of tokenized uh, tokenization in asset management. We've already talked about that quite a bit. And then remember that Fink, Larry Fink, BlackRock, also backing highlights Ethereum's increasing importance in digital finance, meaning most likely we're going to see a very big run from BlackRock and others from Wall Street that would look to not only ETFs, but the potential use of the technology. So a lot really going in the right direction here. Other things I want to hit on, if you look at kind of the performance here, in comparison to Bitcoin, I'll zoom in on this a little bit to show you. If you'll notice right here, East last little push right here, continuing to go up, Bitcoin starting to go a little bit sideways. So is this the indicator that moves us into the accelerated layer for ETH to really fly? And if you look at even our, our own market sentiment, this is last Friday's sentiment number, which continued to climb and if you look at this all the way back here into, you know, the 12th of February into where we are right now, all been up and to the right and mainly maintaining on amplification. So these are good signals uh, in terms of ETH possibly being able to crack this 3K mark. I think once we hit 3K, that's when things will get very interesting. Now, what is causing all of this? You've got this AI narrative starting to push in a lot of different ways. This will win in the Solana ecosystem. This will win in the ETH ecosystem. Here's Kobe EC talking a little bit more around the driving factor here. Officially, the week that we've all been waiting for, NVIDIA on Wednesday uh, is going to report their Q4. This is going to be a big date because this will tell us if this is going to continue to be a significant number going forward. Since their last earnings report, November 21st, stock gained around 45%. Crazy number. Three months, stock has now added $600 billion in market cap, NVIDIA being one of the key leaders out there. I want to go to a clip real quick to let you guys take a look at this, but this is getting into, are they the true indicator for the AI boom? Listen in. I think we're still in uh, the early days of the AI boom. You look at some recent stats showing that the projected CAGR of investment in generative AI is about 80%. So the bottom line is NVIDIA has a, a iron grip hold on this market, will for the foreseeable future. And so at the same time, I do think if you're looking at this as a catalyst, earnings, they'll probably beat. They always seem to beat. But if you look at how the stock traded after the last earnings report, it actually went sideways for uh, all the way until January 5th. And then, boom, it took off like a rocket ship and it's up 45 percent. So I think NVIDIA has morphed into something that you play around earnings, into something that you tuck away and you buy and hold and you own for the duration. You know, many people look at tech and you look at the hardware side of things. You look at what's happening in the AI technology itself. Obviously, many of you have probably already seen the Sora boom this weekend. This is just the beginning. Those are the kind of things that are going to affect a lot of different projects out there. I want to go to another one because this starts to play into the macroeconomic structure of what's happening financially. And is AI one of the key productivity measurements out there? Listen in. 
the way out of this recession is going to be the productivity gains we get out of uh, out of AI. And uh, there's some projections that'll add you know 15 percent to GDP by 2030. That means job growth. So actually, the better NVIDIA does, so goes NVIDIA, so goes the country. And so it basically is a leading indicator of how real AI is. And so, yes, for sure, the earnings is an, is an important event. I just think I think the $800 price target by the, uh, the end of the year is a no-brainer. I just don't think it happens overnight. Wow, $800 price target. Okay, if that were and is the case then that means there is a lot of productivity going into the AI layer. And what does that mean for crypto? What does that look like on some of the projects that you guys are probably invested in? You look at the token speculative gold rush here uh, has all been revived. And a lot of this, I think, started to spin up this weekend because of what happened with Sora. People started to realize, oh my gosh, this is real. We're really going to see major productivity advancements in AI, especially with the quality of the videos. If you don't know what Sora is, go out and do some Googling on that. The main thing is, is it's basically text to video and very advanced video. So it's not uh, kind of clunky or cumbersome. It's a pretty slick tool. Uh, and I think going forward, this could start to change some of what we're going to see in video. A couple of things in video uh, overall, a couple of things. Uh, GRT was at a two-year high. Render was at not far off off of this on all-time highs. And when you look at others that play into this, many of the AI tokens have soared over the last couple of weeks by as much as 25%. Render was probably one of the bigger movers this weekend and continues to be on the move as well. Other ones to watch right here, this, of course, is WorldCoin. We've had that on our show before. A little creepy, but at the same time, still following in line with what could be a huge AI model going uh, somewhat viral. Remember, WorldCoin was created and co-created, I should say, by Sam Altman, who is the CEO of OpenAI. Uh, all this shot up 34% last 24. Again, looking at the potential of what AI and some of the projects that we're going to see. It doesn't mean that these tokens are going to win. It doesn't mean that they're long term. But it goes back to this whole theme that we talk about here on the show often, and that is narratives. Narratives do move projects, just like with NVIDIA, if you're, even if you're in securities. Narratives move projects in big ways. And I think they move a little bit faster um, out there. This was a, a good example of one of the videos. Let me kind of zoom in on that for you guys. This is one of the Sora videos that was created through text prompt. And this is the kind of concept that we're talking about. Now, what does this mean? You're going to look at compute power. You're going to look at storage systems. You're going to look at the functionality of a lot of different technologies that starts to move in this place. So big deal. LivePeer was another one skyrocketing also after OpenAI unveiled its text-to-video AI model. A couple of points here. Community is now bringing source capabilities to the blockchain protocol in the coming months. I mean, they're jumping on that bandwagon. So, bandwagon. so LivePeer, LPT, soared 80% up to for like 14 bucks. So with trading volume up around 3,300%. So very significant. And I have a feeling we're going to see, and this may be a very interesting thing to watch for, is, is the AI narrative actually going to outpace the Web3 gaming narrative? That's something that many investors now are starting to speculate on because there could be some new projects trying to jump. And at the speed in which this is going, there's some possibility. Now, you have Animoca Brands leader, Mr. Yatsu, talks about NFTs as being a way to protect ownership in the age of AI. This is a problem that I think a lot of people are going to be worried about in terms of the capability of AI, whether it's deep fakes and also just the quality and the ownership of real content. That is going to be a big factor. So Yatsu, growing influence of AI content is exactly why there needs to be a growing uh, use for NFTs in the world. A couple of things he said is NFTs are digital stores of culture. And now, you know, that we can transform, whether it's something that's simple as owning your value online or protecting your IP, you know, which I think will go into more and more of a feature, especially if we get regulation around things like brand IP and all that kind of playing into this. So it's a big, big issue here. Plus, he goes on in this article, says the encapsulation, uh, encapsulation of IP could extend to everyone building their own IP by using NFTs. That's another value that we think could be huge. He says, for example, dancer on TikTok, create a viral dancing trend, but without proof that they created first, could monetize it if they wanted to. That's another big value uh, proposition, I think, that Web3 and NFTs talk about. Last up in this article, whole movement can feel deeply personal because it involves money. 
Everybody knows that. And it's the sense it feels a little bit more like digital capitalism sort of comes home in a very big way. I think this is where ownership really starts to trump out because this is the one thing that has been the challenge in Web 2 forever. And maybe we've cracked the code here with what we'll see going forward. So back to the blockchain, we're going to see things like Ethereum and many other projects really start to accelerate. Here's Vitalik talking about it. Uh, praises artificial intelligence. AI's, of course, ter- tokens are surging. One thing he hits on right here, increasing complexity of cyber threats. That's another possibility. AI's role in bolstering cybersecurity is super huge and crucial. One application of AI that I'm excited about is AI-assisted formal verification of code and bug finding. That's kind of cool because it's going to only advance some of the blockchain technology solutions that are out there. Most likely, I could see some lot of, a lot of advances even with Ethereum as well. I want to go to another clip real quick. This gets into uh, Mr. Zuckerberg on AI. Listen in. Right now, I definitely think where we are in the hype cycle is much more, you know, people want to talk about AI. But like, we're just kind of quietly churning and building this stuff in the background. Like, I don't care that much whether something is cool one year or not. When the metaverse space heats up a bit, um, you know, or people try to call it different things because they don't want to embrace our branding around this. But, but when, that, when that kind of heats up, then, you know, you go through these moments where, okay, now we're talking about our, our headsets or that stuff more. So I just think this will kind of go back and forth a little bit over the next several years. But the reality is, is that these have been huge focuses for a while and, and, and I think are, you know, going to continue to be for like the next decade or so until these things both reach their full potential. Software part of AI will probably want to move fast, but I think at some point, Sam is right that we're going to run into some physical constraints on like, how many chips can you churn out? And, you know, how much power you need from like power plants to be able to train the next bigger model. And um, I don't know. All right, so Zuck hit on a couple of things there is that there could be some hardware constraints down the road because software could move at a very rapid pace. The question is, are we in a much narrower opportunity for this altcoin market to move aggressively within crypto? And if you think about that, This headline right here kind of hits it. Don't count on significant altcoin correction. This is coming in from analyst Jason Pizzino. So many people would look at this and say, well, think about all these narratives that we've been talking about and then go back a cycle and think about the narratives that we had during October of 2021. If you guys weren't around around at that time, it was Metaverse. That was when Meta, now known, was Facebook. Facebook shifted their technology and everything else has been pretty much in the rearview mirror. The difference was, is at that time, we didn't have the onslaught of narratives hitting all at once. Right now you have, of course, the narrative around ETFs, tokenization of real world assets. You've got Web3 Gaming, you have AI coming into the space at a very aggressive nature. So what does that mean? It means that there's gonna be a lot of new capital coming in. If there's new capital coming into the markets, we may not necessarily see a correction on these all coins which is the thing that I think a lot of people are looking for. Is there an opportunity for another entry? This is where it gets a little crazy on looking at where the markets are going to go from here. Is it just an up only during this next phase? That's the real question, I think, heading in. So if you look at some of the markets uh, that we're going this weekend, I'll take a look at Render just to give you guys an example. This was Render over the weekend, just to give you an idea. And if you think about just Sora in general, not necessarily a huge um, advancement in a short period of time, we've only seen the beginning of what this is going to look like. But I think the key here is the productivity levels that are going to start to play into this. Of course, when we think about what Render does, other projects out there like Fetch AI, we've seen PAL, we've seen a variety of different projects that have all accelerated in a very short period of time. So these are the ones that we're watching very closely. Now, if you're part of our diamond circle, or part of our mastermind, we actually dropped a deep dive uh, report on AI token strategies about 10 days ago. The reason is, is because when we do a lot of our deep dive research, we'll drop that into our member group first before we start really diving into some of the projects, which renders usually out of video like this. So make sure and become part of that. All you have to do is click the link down below. If you guys want to catch me out there on X, it's at Paul Barron. Catch you next time right here on TechBath.